Hey friends, my name is C and welcome back to a new video for IGCSE Geography. And today we have a new video for theme 3 which will look at 3.5 for energy. And here are the specifications from the website. And in this video we have one case study which will look at an energy supply in a country or an area. So we're starting with renewable and non-renewable energy. So here's a key term, energy mix. And it describes the relative contribution of different energy sources to a country's energy consumption. And here are some notes for renewable and non-renewable energy. So non-renewable energy sources are sources that will eventually run out, and burning of these fuels will cause the emission of greenhouse gas, which will lead to the enhanced greenhouse effect. And over here, I wrote nuclear energy as part of non-renewable energy, but it's between renewable and non-renewable, it's, like it's like a gray area. So that's just something to keep in mind of. But fossil fuels are definitely non-renewable energy. So here are some statistics for the global energy mix. And in developing countries where people don't have electricity, they rely on fuel wood and charcoal as a source of energy. For example, for cooking, for warmth, and for, for um, lighting up stuff. And they are trying to climb up the energy ladder to transition from fuel wood to higher level sources of energy. For example, uh, like renewable energy. So the opposite of non-renewable would be renewable as we know, and the renewable energy sources include solar and hydroelectricity or wind, which are sources that won't run out in the foreseeable future. And the demand of these renewable energy has increased over the years as countries aim to be as green as possible, so more countries are exploring into renewable energy which will eventually um, keep its price lower because currently it's quite high and it's not reliable but as more countries look into it, they will be more reliable and cheaper. And then we have nuclear energy. So as mentioned, nuclear energy is quite controversial and although nuclear energy produces zero carbon emissions but it still has, uh, has a reputation of being dangerous due to what happened in the past with um, the Chernobyl disaster as well as the Fukushima nuclear disaster. However, nuclear energy is quite a good energy source due to multiple different reasons. For example, there are no carbon footprint, sorry, like uh, no carbon emission, no carbon footprint, it's reliable, it's cost effective, and the nuclear price doesn't, doesn't fluctuate as much as oil and gas price. However, the, the disadvantage of nuclear energy include there, will be, there might be power plant accidents as seen in, um, in the past, which will result in a nuclear fallout and there's a difficulty of storing radioactive waste. And also the thing is that these nuclear energy involves using um, elements which are radioactive and these can be used for weapons if someone were to weaponize them. And this might increase certain types of cancer near nuclear plants. And then we have renewable energy sources. So as mentioned before, countries are trying to look actively into renewable energy sources to reduce the enhanced global warming or enhanced greenhouse effect. But, and they'll also try to reduce the reliance on fossil fuels. So in the current world, there are a few, of, uh, a few common renewable energy sources. For example, HEP or hydroelectric power, wind power, biofuels, geothermal and solar power, which we'll look into each of them now. So HEP basically uses moving water to generate electricity and it's often put with a dam because the water will, will turn the turbine which drives the generator which produces electricity. And wind power uses wind turbines so they are placed on a flat land which, uh, with, in places where there's lots of wind which will turn the turbine and turns the generator and produces electricity. However, there are some concerns from people, for example, it's unattractive as well as concerns of the turbines killing the birds as the birds may just fly through the turbine. And biofuels are basically fossil fuel substitutes that are more organic because they are made from crops or more um, neutral way instead of burning stuff. Although biofuels come from a renewable energy resources, uh, resource of resources uh, which, is, which are crops, people critique it as large amounts of water and fertilizers are needed to uh, produce crops as well as produce biofuels. And there's geothermal, which uses the natural heat found in the Earth's crust to heat water, which will drive a turbine. So uh, the, the main thing for geothermal is that these geothermal sources have to be uh, located in specific regions in the world, which are near plate boundaries, 
because in those places like between tectonic boundaries, there are magma which are hot, which will produce geothermal energy. And then there's solar power, which is becoming increasingly popular as we have an abundance of sunlight, but currently it has a high initial cost due to the cost of building solar panels, as well as R&D or research and development that will research into solar energy. Then we have a case study which will look at the energy supply in the country or area where we look at Iceland. So here are some information on Iceland. Iceland is an island located in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and it lies on the mid-Atlantic ridge in the border between the North American and the Eurasian tectonic plates. And the good thing about Iceland is that almost 100% of, of Iceland's electricity comes from renewable energy with 70% from wind, solar, and geothermal, and around 20% from hydropower. And the reason why so much, en so much uh, energy from Iceland can be generated via geothermal is because it's located on a tectonic plate boundary, as we saw just now, and as we saw here. Because, as mentioned just now, Iceland is located in the mid-Atlantic ridge, so the magma in the ridge, like between the, the boundaries, heats up the nearby rocks and underground aquifers, which means Iceland can use these to heat water and to drive turbines. And in the small island of Iceland, there are approximately 30 active volcanoes, meaning Iceland has a lot of volcanic activity, which means that they can use or utilize geothermal energy. And here's a quick statistic that around 85% of the houses in Iceland are heated with geothermal power. And then we'll look at geothermal power plants right now. So there are nine geothermal power plants in Iceland, and the three major ones are these three right here, which I wrote um, the power produced in each geothermal power plant. And this geothermal power station right here is the second largest geothermal power station in Iceland, located located at around 177 meters above sea level near these volcanoes in Iceland, which are active. And then we have solar and wind energy. So due to Iceland's high latitude, because um, imagine the globe right here, we have the equator. Iceland is located between like Greenland right here and America. So Iceland is located like right down here, which is quite up north. So due to Iceland's high uh, latitude, it receives fewer sunshine, so its sunshine hours are less. So solar energy isn't used widely in Iceland. However, the government has tried to capture as much sunlight as possible by, by basically placing solar panels in places such as parking meters in Iceland to just try to maximize the amount of sunshine that they can get. And Iceland is extremely windy because it's an island, but Iceland only has two wind turbines because these wind farms use high voltage lines for electricity transmission, but Iceland uses medium voltage power lines in most places, so they're not suitable. So lastly, here are some advantages and disadvantages for, uh, for Iceland from using this energy supply. So from the advantages, the power plants have a low maintenance cost, although it has a high initial cost. And the energy are renewable energy in Iceland as mentioned, so they will replace coal, natural gas, and oil which are non-renewable energy. And geothermal energy is environmentally friendly due to low carbon emission, so it's a good thing that Iceland is using it quite widely. And the power stations can be a tourist attraction. For example, this geothermal power station right here, which acts both as a geothermal station and a tourist attraction. But this advantage includes there's a high initial cost with high investments in machinery in those power plants, as well as these enhanced geothermal systems can trigger earthquakes if they are not set up or constructed properly. And that's it for this video. And that's it for this video for 3.5 for energy. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you need any more learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check out my website in the description, or you can type it out in your browser at www.emixeteasy.com. And that's it for this video, and I'll see you all in the next video for a new video for IGCC Geography. Here's to learning made easy.